Enlightenment of Change on webtalkradio.com. I'm your host, Connie Whitman. You know I'm happy that you're here. So as you listen to the show, no matter where you are on your journey or your um, life of change, right? Because change is kind of inevitable. We can't avoid it. Um, So to help you navigate that change, I have my free gift for you, which is my communication style assessment kind of an important tool because it spotlights your natural communication superpowers. Really, it's how people perceive your messaging. Flip side, you get your lowest score or the most challenging type of of person that you communicate with. And we shine a light with that report so that you understand what your blind spot is so that when you are in front of someone who communicates literally 180 degrees different than you, you know how to flex your style to theirs. So that is in the show notes. It's my free gift to you, my communication style assessment. I call it the CSA. It's yours. And I hope that you take advantage of a tool. Also, um, if you're loving the show, please, please rate, review, and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And of course, sharing is caring. So uh, share with your peeps. You know, I love having them join us as well. Now, my motivational quote today is by Helen Keller, and Helen Keller says, we could never learn to be brave and patient if there were only joy in the world. And I have to tell you, this quote really had me pause and reflect on when things haven't gone as I had planned, wished, you know, as I look back, I clearly see the hidden messages that I needed to understand. And I feel like maybe at times I can easily stop and listen so I can create the intentional change in my life. But you guys know, right? Often it's hard to even realize that there's a hidden message that we should be reflecting upon. Uh, reflecting upon. Now, I sometimes feel lost in the constant flow of information and the biz- busyness of modern life um, with no way out. And, and by the way, we all, I think, feel that way to some extent. And in the past, I've had a nagging feeling that something wasn't quite right or felt like something was missing that sometimes I just couldn't put my finger on or understand. So have you ever felt that way where perhaps some aspect of your life, it could be relationship, job, finances, health, doesn't really matter. Um, You were just feeling no longer fulfilled. And of course, um, you know, that's frustrating. So how do we discern what's needed to alter the situation we find ourselves in? To me, that's just a great question. And of course, I have an amazing guest. So Janine Thompson is a transformational coach, speaker, and author whose breadth of knowledge and experience spans multiple disciplines and professional expressions from clinical psychotherapy to global business to advanced spiritual growth. She shares her journey and how others can reach their full potential in her first book, 911 for Your Soul. I love that title. And as a highly successful former Fortune 50 executive uh, Janine led diverse human resources team across the globe, delivered keynotes to large audiences, and has helped navigate the way towards profitability while empowering personal and professional growth. So please help me welcome Janine to the show. Thank you for being on, my friend. I'm really happy that you're here. Thank you. I am so excited to be with you, Connie. Well, your depth of knowledge is so extensive and it's so funny, Janine, you know, after I finished my MBA many, many years ago, not even going to say, but I, uh, and the married had kids and then, you know, put the kids through college. And I always said to my husband, if I had to go back, I would go back for my PhD and it would be in psychology because I think the human connection we're missing because we're so into our frame of reference that it's hard sometimes to pause and understand others because we are in this whirlwind of life, right? So today's conversation and about your book, I think is critical and important, and I'm excited to dive in. I'm also excited that you actually uh, you know, wrote this book because I think it's timely in the world we live in. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. So let's start with what is 911 from your soul? Like, how did you land on that? Because that's just so visual for me, that title. Yeah. The, the phrase 911 from your soul came from my own personal experience. Mm-hmm. It was a time in my life where the details of my life looked great from the outside. I was a Fortune 50 executive, had the accoutrements of success, all the things were taught that would give us the joy and the fulfillment. And I could not figure out why I had this persistent restlessness, this yearning that there had to be something more. 
there was something missing. And I am an explorer, I'm a seeker, <laughs> and I could not crack the code on what the heck was missing. I tried to gratitude it away. I looked at best practices. I tried to, you know, ask other people. And at the end of the day, it led me on this search that took me to places that I made fun of. <laughs> so I used to be an evidence-based uh, psychotherapist for yeah. the first 10 years of my career. And then a Fortune 50 exec for uh, 12 years with a number of different roles in business. So I was very much about science, what was proven, and optimizing our potential through those known practices. And things like Reiki and yoga and energy work to me seemed woo-woo, seemed like a waste of time. And, and honestly, 30 years ago, I made fun of it. And I think the universe sometimes has a good giggle with us <laughs> and has a way of, of uh, opening our minds to previously closed doors. So I was brought to yoga and Reiki and through those two practices, a whole new world opened up for me. I did not realize, um, I was really, like I said, evidence-based, and I was very much moving from my head in the world. I was always taught, use your big brain, use your head, figure it out, those 70,000 thoughts. But these two disciplines brought me into my heart. And then I began to study the science of the heart and come to find out we have three brains. Like who knew that? I was never taught that. We got a gut brain, a, a heart brain, a head brain. And actually the info, information is ascending. It flows upward. So it's the antithesis. It's the absolute opposite of what we're taught about our head brain. Now, obviously we need our head brain. That's the analytical, I think. The heart brain is the affective and the gut brain is kind of the survival and the instinct. So I became obsessed with all things soul and it took me on an inward journey. And there was when I found my answers, what was missing, what would truly um, mean success in my life what would give me joy and purpose and passion again. So that's where it came from. And I started noticing in my clients, they were having the same yearning and restlessness. They followed the playbook of success yeah. and it just wasn't enough. Or people were having some sort of identity crisis, some part of their familiar identity, maybe their career, a relationship, their health got stripped away or shaken. And all of the familiar solutions weren't enough. So at the core of a 911, life is actually offering you a love note. And it, and it feels it's masquerading in the details of yearning, challenge, or crisis. But it's really life's way to say, welcome. There's a greater possibility for you and through you, and the world needs you right now. And most of us simply won't get there on our own often without some sort of rattling or shakeup. Did you have a shakeup to, to I, change? Did I, you? I did. I did. did indeed. So, you know, there, we always have a bunch of uh, synchronicities along the way. Just when I was getting restless in my Fortune 50 job, I came back from a trip from China one Friday and the CEO called me and he said, hey, we got a brilliant idea. We're going to offer a buyout package to almost all 4,000 uh, corporate employees and need you to help execute it. And I thought, what are you doing? We can get our SG&A um, managed through another uh, route rather than lucrative buyouts. And I had no intention of taking it. Um, but at the end of the day, in those 14 days, I kept hearing uh, from my inner whispers that it was time. And so I took the package and um, that's when I went on the year long sabbatical. That's what brought, brought me to Reiki and yoga and energy work and sacred sites and shamans. And like, I went for it, which is way out of my comfort zone. 
And um, yes, so to answer your question, I went through my own 911 to, to um, have that experience. And it's interesting because I think, right, Enlightenment of Change, that's the show. And sometimes we choose to change. Great, we chose it. Sometimes it's thrust upon us. And in your case, my case, I got downsized as well, but that was the opportunity. So yeah, we, we lost that paycheck, right? That steady paycheck and pivoted. You, you went on your journey, right? And I knew I wanted to be a business owner. So I was able to pivot because of that package, but that opportunity never would have come had I not gotten downsized. So yeah. even though it was holy crap, right? Can I really, now the opportunity was there that I wanted, right? It's on it literally on a silver platter for me because I had the package, but then, then the, you said the 70,000 thoughts or the 90,000 right. thoughts, they kicked okay. in. Can you really do this? Do you really have a plan? You know, what did I just do? Like for me, I voluntarily took it. They asked me to stay. They wanted more promotions, a bigger career for me. But I actually knew that I was being called by life to contribute mm -hmm. in another way. So I took the package and I thought, initially, I thought this is fantastic. But then I went through a whole identity crisis. Yeah. I did not realize how wrapped up I was in my identity of being a successful executive and that certainty of mm -hmm. direct deposit and the certainty yeah. of the lifestyle. And then all of a sudden when this whole world of soul opened up for me, and if that's not a, um, a term or an experience that is resonant for your listen listeners, you can also think of soul as entelechy. So the Greeks used to say it was the entelechy of a caterpillar to become a butterfly, of an acorn seed to become an oak tree. Nature never gets confused, ever. A caterpillar never becomes a flower. An acorn seed never becomes a willow tree. We are the same. We have that same knowing built and programmed in within each and every one of us. But how we're trained to move through life through our head, yeah. we can't, the rational mind doesn't know the deeper potential of who we are and what we're capable of. And it's interesting, you know, about, I guess when I turned 40, so about 21 years ago, I started on this very spiritual journey, like you corporate exec move, go right, do it sales, right. It's all about the next sale, the next business, keep, keep networking, dig, work harder, work, right. That whole mantra, um, out there. And I remember some reason, some in, in my inbox, I got something about law of, law of attraction. I'm like, what's this law of attraction? Well, that was the rabbit hole for me. And now, you know, fast forward, been studying it for the 21 years. And it was fascinating because I had no idea <laughs> that there was this inner voice. It was just do the next thing. What's the next thing on your to-do list? It's that move, 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 and We're never. taught you got more to do, plug in harder. That's, that's what we are taught the antithesis. That's right. We actually leave potential on the table every yes. day by the myths that we're taught in business. So, so go ahead. I, I was going to say, because so what you're taught right through this, for me, it was that spiritual journey, right? Is to slow down, speed up. That's one of my favorite quotes that I heard through the years, right? That stillness allow for the divine intervention. And I remember I had a reading, um, a colleague, she, she sees angels and she does a Kashuk reading, which I just love. And she said to me, my angels have a very good sense of humor, which I knew they laugh at me. <laughs> And so they do. It's wonderful. And so, and I accept it because I, I, I like humor. I think humor is, is, is good for the soul. But anyway, she said, Connie, the angels are saying you hear the spiritual, whatever the opportunity, whatever it is. And it makes it to about midway to my brain. So about to my nose. And then my brain says, no, 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 that'll never work. And she goes, so it gets halfway in and then you put the ego, right? My brain pushes it back out instead of just sitting with it and allowing it to kind of percolate within me. That stillness, I think, is is hard for all of us. So if you could talk about what is stillness for you and, you know, how do you use it? Or is that not even a thing? I think stillness 
is the single most important gift and also practice that we can offer ourselves. period. It, is, it has a profound, profound impact. So stillness to me is a practice of shifting your awareness from your busy brain, those 70,000 thoughts a day research says we have, shifting your awareness from your busy brain to your heart um, and your wisdom center of your sacral. So I always tell people in stillness, if you close your eyes, place one hand on heart center and one on belly, mm -hmm. we follow touch in our body. Whenever somebody touches us, we follow it. And so that allows us to shift from the busy brain to the heart and the belly or the sacral area in stillness. And for those business leaders out there who are going, honey, you do not know me. Like there is no way I can be still. That was me. When I went to yoga, I thought this is ridiculous. I am inflexible. I've got a busy brain. I'm type A. I certainly can't do this. But I learned that it actually was a myth. It had just been a story I was telling myself, a story that I didn't have time, a story that I um, couldn't sit still. So I have my leaders breathe, one hand heart center, one hand belly, in through the nose, hold the top note, exhale through the mouth for 30 seconds. Let's just start with 30 seconds. Even if you're in back-to-back -back meetings, Nobody's going to notice if you're 30 seconds late. That's right. And we, so begin, begin to start to tune into where our real wisdom sits at our heart and gut. Ideally, you want to increase that as time goes. But for most of my leaders, 30 seconds to two minutes is a beautiful way to begin to open up the portal to infinite wisdom, any problem you're trying to solve, innovation for your business, a process you need to fix, maybe a JV partner. I mean, it's it's we actually as energetic beings contain access to the universe, to all known and unknown information. And if you're skeptical, like I was 30 years ago and said, I have no idea what she's talking about. You don't need to. Here's my counsel. Test and try. You got nothing to lose. At minimum, on the level of science, when you get, engage in breathing, like I said, three breaths, 30 seconds, you harmonize your nervous system, parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. So at minimum, you're going to emerge uh, with more clarity, more excellence in your next meeting. And maybe, just maybe, you'll come to find what we've known for thousands of years, which is stillness is everything but silent. Silence is everything but nothing. It is truly in silence where um, you have a gateway to all that is. And it's funny because our society is the opposite, right? Always on the phone, um, constantly scrolling in between meetings. We're checking emails. Um, I, I remember, you know, when everything was live and I did everything live, I spoke live, right? To, I spoke, I would get to my location early so I could just have a minute to breathe and grab my own cup of coffee before anybody came in, put a little bubble of light around me so that I could allow positive energy in. But I did not want people's negative energy to imp impact me, right? Because I, I feel things deeply. So all... So you get there a little bit earlier. And I, I remember sometimes I don't where I don't know where you're located. I forgot to ask you, Janine. Minneapolis. So you're in Minneapolis. I don't know what the traffic is, but Jersey, the tra the traffic's is pretty bad. And um the couple of highways are just really bad. So, you know, a 40 mile commute could take two to half to three hours. I remember one time though, there was a really bad accident and I was caught in in a um 
in, in traffic. And so I was just calling voicemails and saying, I don't know where the act, this was before you had the live GPS, you know, I don't know what's going on ahead of me. So I'll get there when I get there. Don't cancel the class. Don't think I forgot. I'm on my way, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I finally got there about an hour and a half late. They were waiting for me. And I had been in the, in the car for about three and a half hours. And I walked it, but now I said, what did I do? I couldn't control it. I played the music. I was singing. I was enjoying myself because not, I couldn't do anything. I'm sitting in traffic. When I got there, they were like, oh my God, oh my God. Everybody was all dramatic. And I said, I just need one minute. I just need to use the ladies room. And then we're going to get started. And they were like, really? Like, do you need to decompress? I go, I was listening to music the whole time. <laughs> so yeah. see that frame of reference. They thought I was going to come in frazzled and, oh my God, I don't know how I'm going to get you out. I said, I'll get you out of here on time. I just need to use the ladies room. So I think it's also how we, the situation is the situation. How do we approach that situation? And for me, I'm going to use your word of stillness. It was stillness. I just put the music on and and rocked out a little bit and, you know, enjoyed whatever the the DJs were talking about. Right. You see what I'm saying? So being mindful at the moment, I think, is critical in whatever the situation is. I I, I don't know. What do you what's your takeaway? So a couple of things. One is you did a brilliant job of assigning meaning. So in our 70,000 thoughts, there's essentially love. Am I going to look at this as a set up to something better, compassionate, generative, connective, in service, even if I can't make set of it, sure. sense of it, or fear, irritability, anger, jealousy, separation. So you consciously chose a generative meeting. It's like, oh, well. Yeah, I'm going to be here and it might take hours. And, uh, you know, so you chose a, what we would call a love based or a generative meaning. That's always the choice. For all of us in life, we can have the exact same news delivered to us by the exact same person at the exact same time. Yeah. And I can interview people afterwards and they're like, oh, can't wait to see what happens next. I wonder how this is going to serve us. And then I can have the next person describe the exact same situation as, you know, they're screwing us over. This isn't fair. This isn't right. So you chose meaning and meaning is always a choice. So that's one piece of it. But there's another thing that stillness does for us. I described a breathing practice because yes. breath is kind of our most available yes. tool, no matter where we are, yes. but people can also, uh, the whole idea of stillness is that you soften and empty your busy mind. You can do that through music. You could do it through dance. Many do it. And I'm a big nature um, fan. I think nature is one of our greatest wisdom teachers, but think about a sunset, how many times you were mesmerized and you lost your, your busy brain in the awe and wonder of that beautiful yes. sunset or ocean wave or birds singing or animals playing, right? So there are so many ways that we can be still, you can do it through washing your dishes at yeah. home and get lost in repetition. But the invitation is every leader I work with wants to live their highest potential. They don't want to leave anything on the table. They came here to make a difference. They've worked hard yeah. through their craft or education. They want to make an impact. They want to make a meaningful difference. They want to be regarded. And what we know is science and best practices will only take us um, so far. That's right. So now we got a whole great big brand new invitation, which is the vast majority of our potential rest in our mystical heart. And, and it takes practice. You said that at the beginning. It's, it's not like you read a book and say, oh, I got this now. I'm good. Yeah. That's yeah. the furthest thing. You read the book. There were concepts, ideas. Some of them you were like, oh, I don't know if I like that. Oh, I love that. Pick and choose and then play with, experiment, right? That's the piece of the Test puzzle. Test and, and, and don't give up. Like a lot of times people say to me, Janine, 
I set my phone alarm for 30 seconds and the whole time my mind was, oh, I got to send off this email. Oh, I got this in the next meeting. Oh, I got to pick up this at the grocery store. Like every, and I, the, the trick there is to not fight your mind because mm -hmm. we do know if we try to fall asleep or try to quiet the busy mind, it doesn't work. Yeah, but if your busy it. brain kicks in, I want you to simply say, noted, retouch hand on heart, hand on belly. If it kicks in again, simply say noted. So we don't fight it. Eventually what happens is the more skilled we come at coming back into our body and feeling our breath, like feel your belly expand yes. and fall. The more you do it, soon you'll surprise yourself. And it's like, oh my gosh, I can soften and empty this mind. And even if it's not empty, what you will find is some, maybe it will be in a shower moment. Maybe it'll be between meetings. Maybe it'll be a week later. You're going to have an aha moment yeah. that's going to propel you forward in ways that you'd been searching your mind for and not, a, you know, nothing was coming. Yeah, because we're fighting it. It's funny when with the breathing, you know, you put your hand on your belly. So we want to breathe through our belly, right? And and raise and then all the way up and then release it. It's soothing. When you get really good at your breathing, it becomes really soothing. And it was so funny. We were coming home. My husband and I were coming home. I don't remember, I think Florida and the very bad winds here in New Jersey. I think we were the last plane to land and then they had to shut the airport. That's how bad it was. And somebody said our plane came in like literally sideways. Um, wow. But any people were throwing up and and I, if I hear someone throw up, Gene, I'm like, oh my God, it's coming, right? Yeah. So my husband and we were in the back of the plane. It, we were, it was, it, it was just so hot and it, it was an awful experience. But the whole time I just closed my eyes and I just paid attention, put my hands on my heart and chest and just said, focus on your breathing. So you don't throw up, focus on your breathing. And I focused on my breathing because I couldn't control what was happening. Yeah. Yet your instinct is one of angst. Let me tell you, because we, yeah. it was, it was a brutal bumpy it's ride. Dicey. Yeah. Holy moly. I thought, I don't know. Are we going to like, are we going to crash yeah. kind of, thing? but I just, and my husband was like, and I kept saying, don't just don't touch me and don't talk to me. I need to breathe right now. And then he, okay. It was very calm, but I had to keep breathing. It was soothing in this very terrifying experience. So the breathing can also be soothing as well as allowing your brain to quiet so that you allow the information. And the other word I just wanted to share with you that I've really have practiced being mindful of is surrendering. I love that word surrender, because as soon as we stop fighting and you surrender to whatever the situation is, typically it's not as bad as you thought it was, right? It's, it's worse in our own brain, those 70,000 thoughts, much worse than the reality. And the other thing is it allows space then for the real solution to come or a better alternative to come that I can choose. But that surrendering is really hard. Um, well, it was really hard for me. I could tell you that as a type A personality too, but it's a beautiful word. So when I'm breathing, I think surrender because the life, nature, the world, it, it knows what to do. My body knows what to do, right? Just surrender into that energy. Easier said than done. <laughs> I, I, I love that. And for me, surrender fits into one of my um, coin phrases that I think is a something to live by every day is the beauty of the ant. We, this life is about the beauty of the ant. We are human. So we're going to have limitations and, and we're going to be beautifully messy and imperfect. And That's we're right. also infinite and ever powerful and ever knowing we're the ant. We're going to have times of great joy where life feels decadent and like you don't want the moment to end. We're going to have times of great pain because in earth school we are here to evolve our growth and it is often in times of challenge and pain where we where we're tested to our limits and then we find out we're stronger wiser than we imagine we are powerful creative agents in our thoughts in our words in our actions and there's However you want to define it, 
there is something bigger going on here. For some, it might be a grand artist. For some, it might be God, the universe. For some, it's like, I have no flipping idea what it is, this great mystery of life, but there's an and here. And where surrender comes in is like for myself, if you would have asked me in my 20s, you know, what my life was going to look like, it would have sounded like a bunch of I. I've got a plan. I'm going to get my education. I'm going to execute it. I'm going to get that promotion. I'm going to get the house. I'm going to get the fam. I, 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 I. Now at 57, <laughs> oh, and many humble experience <laughs> since, I actually now have such a depth of appreciation for the utter intelligence of life mm. that moved to me, that moved away from me, that mm. moved through me, that I didn't set up. My big career changes all happen via a divine um, synchronicity. Some earth angel, some person I had never known got introduced to me, which opened up a door. That wasn't part of Janine Thompson's mental plan it wasn't on my business plan for the year so i it's become so much easier to join the flow of life you use the word surrender to me it's a joining and it's so liberating because i finally understand now it wasn't ever all about me there was such a bigger intelligence in play and the experiences I was meant to have, to contribute, uh, I, I'm, I was going to have them, whether I momentarily made a left turn when a right turn would have gotten me there faster. That's right. For me, it's been liberating because before I, I gripped that steering wheel so darn hard with control and influence and just thought if I'm smart enough, wise enough, plan carefully enough, I can, this is how it's going to go. And yes, of course, that's also why I'm a certified high performance coach too. There are specific strategies like blocked time strategies that increase our productivity up to 30% a week. Like yeah. I do use the science Me too. <laughs> of high performance but that's where the and comes in. It's not enough on its own. We must, and I think the world is screaming for us to tap into a higher order of meaning, a higher order of connection, a higher order of potential uh, in order for us to not only save our earth, and I don't think that that's traumatic given what we're going on with tension and, and inequities and violence. Um, this is all our call to be the best of who we came here to be. Yeah. How exciting is that? It, it, it's a beautiful thing. We truly are in control of our destiny. So when people, so two things before we end the show, people say, I don't have a choice. I was just talking about this um, over the weekend. My husband had a conference and I was able to travel with him and we were talking and, and about choice, right? One of the speakers. And when people say to me, well, I don't have a choice. I say, sure you do. You just made a choice by saying, I'm not going to do anything. Your mm -hmm. words, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a choice. So you're choosing to do nothing. That's still a choice versus choosing to do something, whatever that is, you know, on the other side. Um, the other thing uh, too is, and, and I share the story often when I met my husband, we're married 31 years and I say happily married for 30 years. Yes. Thank you so much. January, we had our 31st anniversary wow. um, ups and downs. You know, it's not all smooth sailing. Like my, it's, my it's the and right. It's beauty. The and. The and. Yeah. And it back to my quote, right. It's that the, the good, the bad and the ugly, we, we have it all in our life. And I'll tell you when I first uh, got my licenses in my twenties, and I was sponsored by Prudential was the company. And I was supposed to go to a, 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 a office that was about 40 minutes from where I lived, but I knew a friend and he got me in and, you know, who, you know, and all this, I get all my licenses. I go down and they said, we don't have a position for you. We filled it. I was horrified. I thought, well, what do I do now? So now I have these licenses. I have no place to go. I have no income coming in, right? Panic attack. So he said, you know what? I have another office, which was 15 minutes from my house. He says, well, why don't you go interview there? But I knew no one. And I, right. That comfort zone. I was a kid. I panicked. 
anyway, and interviewed with the, the regional, liked him better, ironically. Fast forward, that's where I met my husband. The uh, gentleman, a couple of guys that are young guys that I worked with, he was friends with them and he would come. They would go out after work and we would chat. He and I would chat and then they had a wedding to go to. And he said, you want to come? You know, everybody, you wouldn't have to worry about me. And net, net, the rest is history. If that moment of angst and anger and, oh my God, how dare they do this to me? I never would have met my husband. So every truly, and we hear, we hear people say everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. So as we age and I, I'm 61, so you're a little bit younger than me, but I, you try to lean into those periods of angst and, oh my God, what am I going to do now? I can't believe they did this, right? That anger, that, that brewing of, of, um, you know, unrest within us. If you lean into that and say, well, okay, what can I control and kind of put it in perspective, surrender my word again, um, the right opportunity follows. We, everything happens for a reason. We have to believe that and live through that. So I, I don't know, again, we're out of time, but your last thought, Janine, please share. Choose your meaning in that though, because it at first it can feel like oh, a disaster. This isn't what you wanted. And I invite all of your listeners to wonder and simply say to themselves, I wonder, I wonder how this might serve me. Now, part of you is going to be fighting yourself, saying, There's no way it can serve me. It wasn't supposed to be that way. And say, Okay, noted. Noted. And then go back to what if up? What if this turned out even better than I expected? What if there's some something that'll forever change my life? You met your husband on something that you wouldn't have set up for yourself, right? That's what I'm talking about, that grand artist in life. Like when we look back and we connect the dots, it's so liberating to know that we're asked to show up to be our best. But there are so many gifts of love waiting for us, and we just got to open them. Yeah, I think it was Steve Jobs, and I don't remember, it was one of, he spoke at a commencement speech at yeah. one of the Ivy League, right? And he said, here's the deal to the kids, right? He goes, here's the deal. You know, you're looking ahead going, what's my next step, right? I don't know what to do. He goes, and I'm telling you, I look back and I think, ah, oh, that step created that step, which created that step. He goes, now I look back, it's all connected. Just it, take a step, right? It's just about taking it. that first I, step. I actually love that commencement. Yes. Speech. And he's right. We can't connect the dots going forward. Not in a rational mind, by the no. way, our soul can though. That's so right. Tap into our soul's knowing and anything that's a heart's yearning, your heart's yearning is actually your soul's whisper. So please, when you feel your heart going, oh, and you wonder and you wish and something seems like something you want, that actually is your soul's will. So feed it and nurture it. And you will be able to connect those dots someday. But someday. Just, yeah. It's the stillness. Again, it goes back to that, right? That ability to stillness. Guys, I think you have to buy the book 911 from your soul. You need it. I'm telling you. Um, and if seriously, if you have a question for Janine, this will all be in the show notes as well. You can email her at Janine at JanineThompson.net. If you have a, um, the website is janinethompson.net and there is a beautiful free gift, of course, that she's offering um, everyone. And it's in that free gift, it's what makes your soul light up. You want to talk about that real briefly, uh, Janine? Yep. This is a really good practice. Many of us are so busy functioning in life. We've actually lost sight of what's what I call sacred. You can use the word precious to you. And it's a fun 15 minute practice and uh, prepare to be just delighted. And you will see tons of examples of what actually makes you feel fully alive. What makes your soul light up? And then we add on as, as I am the beauty of the Anne girl, we tap into the heart and soul. And then I'll ask you to schedule um, some of those activities in your life that make you feel fully alive. Don't forget to play. You know, whatever mission you're on, uh, I lost sight by working too hard at times of what made me come alive. And this is an invitation to reconnect. So enjoy.
I love it. I can't wait to do it. <laughs> yes, it's so <laughs> it's stunning to see what comes up from a quote you had forgotten about or some comment somebody made years ago. Like you really dig back into your Rolodex oftentimes of things you forgot and you're going to start to, you'll be guided through what are my patterns. It's a really cool practice, folks. Like give yourself that gift of tuning in and, and see what makes you light up. And it's 15 minutes. Everybody can scroll away 15 minutes, right? So easy peasy. Thank you so much. Yes. And thank you, Janine, for sharing that. Um, I love giving gifts to, to people because I think that's how we can explore what's a good match for whatever that next step is. Right. So if they love that exercise and they love your book, you know, maybe they'll do a group group coaching with you or something you don't know. But I love that the guests provide these little free resources because we could dig it a little bit deeper and see if it's a good fit for me for now. It might not be for a year. That's okay. But it, exposing yourself and opening yourself up to what could be, I think is really powerful. So thank you so much for that free gift. I'm, I'm always delighted to share that with my people. So thank you so much. It's my pleasure. I love to meet people. And I know you offer that they could reach out to me with a question. Please yes. do. I promise you, you will hear from me personally. Like yep. I deeply care about leaders living the best of their professional life, the best of their personal life. And uh, we could do so much more if we would just open ourselves up to what could be not what our little pea brain thinks it yes. could be right there's yes, so much yes, more yes. out there and yeah. it's all in our wonder suit here it really is so thank you so much uh, for being on truly lovely meeting you and chatting and i hope everyone found value in um the end and the book and just everything we talked about so many great insight so thank you again and thank you all for joining me um you know as we uh explore and build together what changes are happening in your life. My guests and I, we have you and, and just hoping our conversation resources, the book, the free gift, right? My free gift that I start with. I really hope you choose to do something because listening to the show and gaining the information is a beautiful thing. I'm not, I'm not saying that's bad, but once you take a tip or an idea or a tool and put it into action, oh man, magic starts happening. And that's, I know what Janine and I hope for all of you. So please take advantage of the free gifts. Use the information immediately af after listening to the show. Um, and thank you all for tuning in to Enlightenment of Change with me, your host, Connie Whitman. I will see you all next week. Thank you so much. And, and have an inspired week. Please, please, please try something try the breathing exercise, read the book, do the free 15 minute um, exercise that Janine shared, do something, report back. I really would love to hear about your successes and your little wins because the little wins add up to the big ones. So thank you so much. I will see you next week. I am truly honored to have you on this journey of change with me. I love you all truly. I'll see you next week.